Hi guys, welcome back to another installment of the Renovating My 1930s Flat series. While the majority of the heavy work is well behind us, this time we'll focus on small furniture adjustments and trinkets. We will also go thrifting all around a particular well-known European island, so let's go! Guys, I think I cracked the gramophone situation. Hear me out. It was never supposed to be in the yellow room. There is enough space in the green room for the gramophone to fit there and I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm so proud of myself. It's like it's not in a way and stylistically it even fits better. Okay, I'm gonna have to probably get rid of this radio because it's too tall but this whole thing it's it works. Um, Excuse the rubbish but you can easily get out of the kitchen, you won't trip on it, and it's just around the same height as the sofa. And I didn't like this side of the sofa anyway, because it was too plain and it was too jarring when you entered the room. So this is perfect. And it also looks really nice because it looks a little bit like this cupboard right there. Like, tell me this is not a good fit. I mean, it does look very nice, dare I say. I'm actually surprised. Shopping haul. What other haul is there? Why did I just say shopping haul? Anyway, I got these at Homla. No idea if it's around anywhere else in Poland. Probably like Europe in general. But it was 175 zlotys, and I thought, you know what? I always say prices in dollars because like I want to make things easier for, for people. But actually, you know what? Just Google that. Why do I have to change my currency? <laughs> I got some cushions as you can tell i've been looking for cushions that are patterned and it's so difficult to find especially in like home decor shops nowadays because patterns are just difficult to style and i'm assuming that's why people are not fond of them but they had this collection that i think was like indian patterns and hopefully they'll work and if they don't i have a backup plan if they don't i'm just gonna place them on the windowsill <laughs> just so they can sort of look nice but not necessarily interfere with the space. Hi, this video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the Roaring Twenties. The main character, June, is trying to solve a family mystery. In each new scene, you unravel a new piece of the story and you sometimes discover new stylish characters. It's one of those games that is super relaxing but is also quite challenging, so for me it's a perfect balance because I don't get bored, but it also doesn't stress me out. And the storyline is really intriguing. And of course the overall aesthetic of the game is right up my alley because who doesn't love a little bit of that 1920s glamour? The game is available to download for free on mobile devices that have Android or iOS. It is also available on desktop through Amazon and Facebook, so use the link in the description to download the game for free. A new addition to the lore is also the June's Journey Interactive Diary, which is a hardcover interactive book featuring hidden object games, puzzles, beautiful artwork from June's Journey, and also some space for journaling. There is a limited number of copies available, so go get yours now because you're gonna regret it. The diary is available for pre-order worldwide right now. I'll also link it in the description. So that will be all. Thank you and check it out. This one here is a vase. Ugh! Ugh! You know what? Never mind. It was discounted. It was like 30 zlotys, probably around $10. I thought this looks a little art, art deco and I like the color, like it just matches the vibe, <laughs> especially the pink wall. So here's the vase and then also there is some spatulas for the kitchen, which again I got specifically for this color and because I have a similar one that is falling apart at this point, hopefully the, these will last a little longer. So regarding the yellow room, I'm like, I need storage. <laughs> this is the only room so far that is not full of furniture and one and a half wall is going to be completely covered with 
a library. Now, obviously on the open shelves is gonna be mostly books. There might be a cupboard on the bottom where I would store stuff, but I personally think knowing how much stuff I own, it's still not enough. So I'm thinking what's gonna happen in the opposite side of the room. We have the desk, which is at this point in an unknown location, like I don't know where to put it. <laughs> but we also have a wall that's on the left side of the window. And it's not big, it's like a meter wide, but I'm thinking maybe I should place some sort of a cupboard there. It's also a tall space, so maybe something tall, I don't know. And then I also found this, which is like a hanging cupboard. And it doesn't have too much storage space, but I'm like, any storage is better than none. At this point, I can store my sewing supplies in here, uh, stack some ribbons, threads, whatever. So I'm debating whether or not to get it, because it's not too cheap. We'll see. In the meantime, I kept readjusting the desk so it's in the best possible position when it comes to the lighting, taking up the space in the room and also separating the future library area from the work zone. I also finally found the right vintage tablecloth for the living room table. Cutlery! And I bought this classic looking set of cutlery. It's still before breakfast, so naturally I had to <laughs> I had to do this. There used to be another hanger attached here. Okay, where does this go? Does it go here or does it go here? I don't have enough space for these. I, I thought I'm gonna put like three up. I think this one's going here. Cute! So I finally found a cupboard that was the right size for the wall that's near the window in the yellow room. This would serve as a fabric storage and a space for my filming equipment. Now, not gonna lie, I bought this thinking it's an antique piece, but upon unpacking, I realized it's actually a replica. While on a trip to the UK, I decided to spend much of my time thrifting and looking for unique pieces that could fit in my luggage. I started at Portobello Road in London. The stalls are always full of fun trinkets and I had to keep reminding myself that I will need to transport all of the stuff back to Poland. So most of the things I'm showing here I did not actually get, some of which I regret leaving behind, but also some of it was really overpriced. So maybe it's for the better. I then went to Liberty mostly for fun because speaking of overpriced, damn is that place expensive. I also had to look at William Morris cushions at John Lewis but I realized I will not be able to fit them in my luggage and again they were expensive. I then traveled to Edinburgh and promptly started my charity shop hunt. It was my first time in Edinburgh since the pandemic, but luckily most of my favorite spots didn't close down and I was able to find some gems. I sadly had to leave some paintings, prints and bigger items behind because they simply would not fit in my luggage and they were too heavy and fragile to send over to Poland. Like this gorgeous trunk was 45 pounds, but also where would I put it anyway? I then went all the way down to Brighton and while there I also managed to spend a little time thrifting. So here are the pieces I got in Brighton. Here is an Edwardian golfing themed card that I want to get framed and a Georgian print for my bedroom. This print was like eight pounds so I think it's a steal. 
In Edinburgh I bought this 1930s plate and also this Scottish book with the most disappointing ending actually. Have a look at some other pieces I got. What is up? Ew. What is up? Some of the stuff I... <coughs> oh! Oh my god, why am I falling apart? What is happening? <laughs> Let's try it again. Some of the stuff I brought in from the UK. <laughs> this Portobello Art Deco 20 pounds figurine, which is a little messed up. It barely made it in one piece, but it did. And I feel like it's probably not actually 30s Art Deco. It might be 70s, thus 30s, because um, I just have a feeling it might be later. And then I also got this William Morris tray, which is gonna be perfect for all sorts of sweets and snacks. And the color palette is also immaculate because you got both light green and light pink. So this is sort of the overall vibe. And then we have the King George VI coronation plate from 1937, which I just thought is such an interesting memorabilia. Also, I might need a plate stand for this one because it would look much better if it was like that. This is my current wardrobe. It's a disaster. It needs to be taken care of. It needs to be removed by 8 a.m. tomorrow, so good luck to me. Here is a last look at my bedroom and bathroom before the built-in wardrobe and the bathroom cupboard were installed. Naturally, the flat got turned upside down again, but it was so worth it because slowly my dream wardrobe and bathroom emerged, and I mean... It, it just looks good. That's what I'm gonna keep doing now, just opening and closing the door. The way I'm literally lying here giggling at this painting that I just hang on the new wardrobe. It's li it looks literally like what I wanted from the start. And it was one of the points of my bedroom where I had like a clear image in my head of what I wanted to look like. And it looks just like that. <laughs> it All it's missing is wallpaper, but have a look. <laughs> <laughs> also, the wardrobe matches the door so well, like, who designed that? Who thought of that? Okay, I didn't actually design it, but like, whose idea was it to put a wardrobe in here? Oh yeah, it was mine! <laughs> so that's all for this episode, but as always, stay tuned for some more updates coming soon! See you later! Also, don't forget to download June's Journey for free using the link in the description and you can also pre-order the June's Journey Interactive Diary using a link that is also in the description below, so go get it now!